Hello, Nate. Hello, mate. How are you? Very well. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Welcome. Thank you for Welcome inviting to three me. Three tribes. Yeah. Nice let's do it. <laughs> So I've been doing hot yoga for about three years. OK. And I'm, I love it. I don't think I'm particularly good at it, but, yeah. I, I, like, but I like doing it. I like doing it. Let's go through. OK, let's go through. Brilliant to see you. I never really get to see you anymore. You, you're too busy these days. <laughs> now you've got this big new job. Four and a half thousand people across 37 different markets. Huge responsibility. You've won Agents of the Year on, on numerous occasions. What do you think is behind that ongoing success? We've had great success over the years because, for various different reasons, and I'll try and go through them. I think, you know, the first one is not taking anything for granted. Being number one is difficult because people are constantly trying to steal your business off you. Of course. And the challenges are, are coming from places that they never came from before. And they're challenges, but they create opportunities as well, and they encourage us to evolve our business, which is really exciting. An advantage of having scale is that you have the resources behind you to, to, to change mm. things like that. As long as you have the freedom and the autonomy to do it, you can, you can pivot. So that's an interesting point, right? Because you've got 1,400 people and you're telling me that you, know, you can pivot quickly. Yeah. How did you manage to keep that agility in, a, in an organisation of 1,400 well, people? We were one agency. Depending on what your specialism was, you'd sit in those specialisms in a quite a silent way. And, mm -hmm. and what we did this year is we structured, restructured the business into seven, what we've called business units. But ultimately, they're the size of agencies. So that allows them to be much more agile. But, but then also, we, 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 you know, we diversify. So we do core media planning and buying still. That's the core of our business. But yeah. we've also diversified into other areas as well. So that diversification, how much of that has been led by the strategy and structure and, and kind of vision that you had for the business and how much was led by the clients? Both. So, so the consultants, so we set up consultancy two and a half years ago now, which was, and that was designed very much because we felt that we needed to have more upstream conversations with clients and mm. there are opportunities to kind of monetize our services and the brains that we've got within our building better in the yeah. way that consultants do. So that was one, that yeah, was one yeah, kind of it. area of diversification. Another one is kind of in-housing. So, so clients are increasingly demanding new models of working. Yeah. I would say our scale has given us the capability to be able to respond to that very quickly, just by virtue of the fact that we've got so many people. You, you called it in-housing. I've actually started calling it right housing. The reality is that every client has got a slightly different set of needs. And so, I mean, you've just, to, to me, you've just articulated right housing there because every client is actually saying something quite different. Yeah. And depending on where they sit on that spectrum of, of, of right housing, you can offer a service that actually offers value back to that. Exactly. Uh, and an agency's role is to be able to adapt to what their, whatever a client's needs are. And so I think that we're very well placed to do that, and I think scale helps that. But I think more fundamentally, our philosophy has been the same for 15 years, and that is people first, better results. Every sort of iteration, every interpretation of that has been slightly different. And when you were UK CEO, how did you make that show up across the business? Basically, I wanted to take the pressure off people. Yep. When I took over as CEO, I was very keen to introduce a mechanism to allow people to have space. And so what I said was, look, you guys can work the hours you want to work, you can work where you want to work. I'm totally cool with that, as long as you deliver your KPIs. But if you want to leave work early, but you, you decide you want to pick up later in the night, I don't want you contacting your colleagues mm -hmm. and emailing them after seven o'clock or yep. in the weekends. Yep. And I find that even if I am really busy in the day, if I don't read email after seven o'clock at night mm. and I'm present with my family and I'm there with my kids and I'm not mm, like that, I generally sleep better as well. Okay. I just think it's healthier. And that kind of evolved into a focus on mental health. And probably the most powerful thing was to do a thing called My Mental Health Story. We had about five people do it the first time and they wrote their own story about their relationship with mental health. And it could have been something that happened to them or a loved one. And they sent that email to the whole company with their name on it. Mm -hmm. yeah, so quite brave. Yep. You've got to say, you know, and also quite risky because we didn't know how it was going to go down. Yep. Everyone read them. People responded incredibly positively to them. So I suppose what it did overnight was it broke down barriers, it destigmatized the conversation, it communicated to the company that it's something that we care about as a leadership. It's just created a vibe where people know that it's okay to talk and it's yep. okay to not be okay and it's all, you know. We're there, we, we're there for them. I mean, we, we actually stole mental health stories from you. Oh, good. Uh, one of the, uh, the people on my team, you know, she said, shared her story and she got like hundreds of emails and you know, tens of people coming up and saying, look, can I just have a conversation with you about X? Anything that encourages that sort of behavior can only be a good thing, you yeah. know, and, and, and I think can only be good for business.
got these pods over here. I want to show you one of these as well. Pods? Yeah, they're like they're like flotation tanks. Oh, now, wow. I, I haven't actually been in one of these. Right. But they're supposed to be absolutely amazing. When you go, you go in one, and you, I don't know, for 20 minutes or so, you come out, and it's like you've had a complete factory reset. Right, okay. And everything you see is just kind of accentuated. Everything you hear is accentuated. It's just supposed to be like really incredible experience. I want to go back to the people first, better results. Yeah. I think we're all proud of our industry and we think it's a fantastic place to, to, to work in. That said, it is becoming more difficult. Uh, and I, I, I just wondered what thoughts you had on as we bring new creative talent into the business, how do we, how do we encourage them to thrive and how do we stop them from burning out? It's a real challenge because it is a business where you, know, you encourage people to put their hand up to stuff and throw yourself in, out of your comfort zone because that's where the magic happens and that's how you grow and you'll make mistakes, but it's cool, we've got your back. But you don't want people to burn out. You don't want to put, you, you don't want to put people so into their, outside of their comfort zone that they, you know, they can't handle the pressure and, yep. the, and the stress and, and everything that comes with it. So talking there about uh, burnout and over, overloading people with, with work, one of the things that obviously we can use to try and counteract that is technology uh, and in particular machine learning to start to take some of those tasks away from people that perhaps took loads and loads of time and stopped them from doing like more interesting stuff or actually just like you know cause that burnout and if, you know from 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 what i've seen the way that mediacom has embraced new technology has always been quite interesting it's a combination of things i think partly the way that we work together i think it's really important that we are able to and skilled to have an army of people who are able to utilise your tech, most of which is machine learning based, yep. to deliver great results for our clients. We're, we're a technology business. You know, we've got no desire to, to be anything else apart yeah. from a technology business. And you know, one of the frustrations actually over over sort of you know more recent years, and we're getting through it now, has been that we've built this great technology, but either it's been underutilised or the people that are using it just just weren't good enough. And so, like you know, the, the fact that you've jumped, like you jumped onto that, and you've now got a huge amount of highly trained and qualified and certified uh, people in your business who actually understand how to get the best out of that. That's that's how you add value to a client. Yeah. It just becomes almost like a, a symbiotic partnership. Yeah. If you can get it right. Yeah. And I think that's I, I, t I agree with everything you've just said there. And I think that the the partnership has come a very long way. It is in a really good place now. And I think that you push us actually sometimes in a way that we really need to be pushed mm. to to get us to that capability level that we need to be at. And it's yeah. if you if you go back five years ago, even the relationship was much more transactional, mm. and now it's much more useful and um, fruitful. Like how have you seen that, the, the, the way in which we're using machine learning, have you seen that have a difference, a ch like a material difference to the way in which people are working on a day-to-day -day basis? And is it something that like, you know, we should perhaps explore much further in the partnership to ensure that you know, we, we, we're giving people every chance of being successful? Yes, we should explore it more in answer yeah. to your sec the second part of that question, because uh, it, it's not perfect. But I would say we are definitely seeing a reduction in the number of people who are having to spend their time doing arduous manual time, yeah. uh, ma manual tasks that can be done by computers. I, I don't think anyone would disagree with me that we, we've sit, we've, we're on a really positive journey on that. It's not yeah. perfect, but yeah. we're definitely moving in the right direction. I think that's good for our people. Anything that allows our people to just focus their attention and time on um, work that is you know, clever yeah. and, and you know, can only come from people yeah. and people's brains. And, and meaningful to them. It's yeah, help them exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Everyone, everyone wants to go home at the end of the day, end of the week, think, I actually made a bit of a difference yeah. today or this week. Yeah. And let's be honest, if you're just doing a few reports, you're probably not thinking you're doing, having that much of a difference. Very true. So this is the yoga studio. I've only been doing yoga for about three years. Yeah. I really like it. Like, I just really enjoy it. I quite like the idea of meditation, but I don't love sitting and meditating. So. You can do that when you're doing yoga, which is quite good. I'm going to have to do a class. We're not going to have time to do it today. Okay. I will take you up on that offer at some point in the future. Okay, cool. But unfortunately, I've got to get back to the office. Okay, brilliant. Well, look, lovely to see you. You too. Thanks for coming down here. No, thank you for having me.